able to share with you this morning the power of the believer's thanksgiving that opens the door for the supernatural experience. Thanksgiving, it's not just something that we do, it's a lifestyle of the believer. It's more than an act of uh, being kind, it's more than an act of being a nice person, it's more than an act of being uh, uh, a good person or being courteous, but it's the power principle that activates the God's power for the supernatural release of a complete wholeness and fullness of restoration in the life of a believer. I'm going to say that again. It is the power principle that activates God's power for the fullness. That activates God's power for wholeness and restoration and total completeness in the life of an individual. That's what Thanksgiving is. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this day. We give God all the glory. We give you all the honor. We are so thankful for the great and the many things that you have done. We are so thankful for the things that you are set to do in our lives. We appreciate your presence. We give you praise and glory as we receive your word today. We open up our spirit to be transformed by the power of your word. We engage your word in truth. And we thank you, Lord, that your word becomes our first priority. And it stands as our final authority in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now when you look at Thanksgiving, often at times we think it's just words. Last year we showed you and shared with you that Thanksgiving comes with an attitude. Last year we tell you if you are thankful, you don't wait for an occasion to be thankful. It is a lifestyle. It's something that is seen in me. I, I walk around as one who is thankful. I act as one who is thankful. I deal and relate with people around me as an individual who is thankful. So it becomes a lifestyle. I don't wait for an occasion to be thankful. The way I deal in my community is as one who is thankful. My responsibility in life because I'm a thankful believer in God, my responsibility or my responses rather in life is one that is activated because I'm thankful. So I, I, I go around not because I want everybody to know I'm a Christian, but because that's just my lifestyle. Not because it's Thanksgiving time, it's just that's who I am. So this is what God is looking for us, that we live life based on the fact that we understand that we have been dealt with grace, we've been dealt with mercy, and therefore we ought to be thankful. And we ought to be thankful every time of our life. We understand that. So as we celebrate this month, as this month of Thanksgiving comes near, it is every individual, every believer, rather, responsibility to continue to act in faith. Because Thanksgiving is a catalyst of my faith. In other words, it is a vehicle or it is a vessel at which I use to convey my faith into the, into, from the supernatural into substance. That's what I use with Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving comes with power. Someone say Thanksgiving is power. It's not just words. It activates the power of God for the supernatural wholeness and completeness and the restoration of a believer. Ten lepers in the book of Luke 17. Ten lepers were around when Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Ten lepers he found on the way. And the Bible says they were all sick. And once you were a leper, it is customary back in those days that they sent you out of the town. So you're going to be sitting out of the, the gate of the city of the gate. And then you stay there, you don't go back into the city until you are whole. So as Jesus met with his ten lepers, the Bible says he asked them what they wanted. They wanted to be healed. So he told them that they were healed. And based on that, as they went, the Bible says that they got healed. But, but what happened was that only one guy came back out of that ten to give thanks. And Jesus Jesus was aware of that and Jesus commended him 
for coming back. And Jesus said, because he came back to give thanks, not only is he healed, but now he's going to be made whole. That word wholeness means that nothing broken, nothing missing, as if he never lost everything. Well, what does that mean? Well, back in those days, if you were a leopard, you lose access to everything you ever owned. You were put out of the town. You sat in the front of the gate of the town. And then you lost everything. Can you imagine for how many years they've been out there on the gate, don't have access to anything, resources, always waiting for remnant from the city before they can eat. And so what Jesus told the man was that not only are you healed of the leprosy, but now you've been made whole. Meaning that everything you've lost because of this ailment, everything you've ever lost, that was yours you are now going to recover it back because you took time to be thankful to god and so the man was restored back but what happened if this man never went back well he wouldn't have activated that out of jesus but jesus is love oh yes he is you have a burden of responsibility to respond to god what he has placed in your hands now what i want to show you today is to put light to the power of thanksgiving Thanksgiving comes with offering giving of thanks. Let's go back into the Bible days in the Old Testament. And I want to show you that you can position yourself for the supernatural abundance of God. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me. Say, I can position myself myself for the supernatural abundance abundance of God. God. Now, let's look into the book of, uh, quick, quick, look into the book of 2 Peter real quick. Because in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says that we can multiply the grace of God. Grace is God's favor that enables me to do things I cannot do on my own. But I can multiply and activate God's favor upon my life. How can I do that? Well, let's look into the scripture. Because we we can activate that. In, In the scripture, it says grace and peace... Be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. As his divine power has given to us. What has his divine power given to us? His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Did you see that? His divine power has given to us all things. Say all things. That pertains to life and godliness. Go to verse 2 real quick. His divine power has given to us all things that pertains to what? Life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge. It is when I know I have the accurate knowledge of what's been released to me. I can multiply that because of the knowledge of knowing that thanksgiving is powerful god gives me the privilege to hear the word and also present me with an opportunity to exercise the word that i hear are you all with me god will give you the privilege to hear the word and that's knowledge and it gives you the what the opportunity to exercise what you've heard And that's how you see great results. Amen? Amen. So what I want to do this morning is present you with an opportunity so that you can be able to see great results. How many of you want great results this morning in your life? Come on, I want to see those things. You want great results? Say, I want great results. And great results you should get. Amen? Amen? All right. So Thanksgiving is a reflection of how we trust and love God. With everything that's happening in the world right now, with all the ups and downs, uh, economic uh, instability, we have a whole lot to be thankful for. We we, we can be thankful for our family, be thankful for our church, be thankful for our careers, but most of all, we can be thankful for God's grace and his mercy. Those two sisters have been around for the longest. Grace and mercy. <laughs> God uses these two sisters to be a blessings in our life. Amen. 
All right, so the Bible says that we can multiply the grace, and what we want to do is show you through Scripture how can I multiply the grace? I've got to have knowledge of what Thanksgiving is. I want to show you one thing about Thanksgiving because back in the Bible days, in the Old Testament, there was what is called the peace offering. The peace offering was a combination of Thanksgiving and vow. Vow is a free will offering. So what the people did and what was expected of the people was to help them deactivate or kind of diffuse from them an act of selfishness. Because what selfishness can do, it can hold you back from what you, God, has for your life. A selfish, a selfish act can deprive you of what God is doing, catch you blindsided from what God is doing. An example would be what happened in the Garden of Eden. What the devil did in the Garden of Eden was to change the narratives for Adam and Eve to get them to take the focus off from God and to put it on themselves. And so what could happen in life is that we could keep looking at what we don't have and that takes the focus off what God has already done and in that way we become less appreciative of what God is doing and we think because we don't have what we want that God has not done what he's really doing. And so you can take your eyes off of what God is doing and now you put your eyes up on yourself and then you are deactivated from what God is doing. But God wants you to see that he is always with you consistently, that he will never leave nor forsake you, but it takes the power of thanksgiving to activate the supernatural that God has for you. But the question is, can you see it? Can you see God around you? Just because you don't have what you need, what you want, and what you desire right now don't mean that God has not been there, that he hasn't come through. Things might not be right, but you need to give thanks. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, give thanks always, in all circumstances. Listen to it. He didn't say give thanks for these circumstances. He says, in it, while you're in it, give thanks. Because it is, the, not, it is the nature of God for us to give thanks when circumstances are not right. Listen to what he told Israel. Israel were in a part, where they were, they were part of their life where they were in bondage. I mean, he told them, that you, as long as you are in bondage, you got to realize one thing. It says, just because you are in bondage shouldn't stop you from planning and getting married. He said, give your, your daughters to be married. He said, because the plans that I have for you, they are plans of good, not of evil. Just because things don't look right, don't stop the plan of God. Nothing on this earth, whether you respond to it or I don't respond to it, whether we don't respond to God, nothing on this earth changes the destiny of God. What we need to do is to reassemble ourselves and reconnect ourselves and realign ourselves to what God is doing. God is always willing and he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. But we need to line up with his program. God has not come to take side with your program, but he's looking for folks who will line up with what he wants to do. So when we look in the scripture this morning, Come with me to the book of Leviticus. I want you to take a quick look at what's happening in the scripture in the Old Testament. You will find them talking about some terminology which, which, has, which is associated with farming, is associated with uh, 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 um, planting seed and all that. But that's what they used back in the Bible days as a means of dealing, a means of sacrifice, because Jesus, this, the Bible in the Old Testament was speaking to a community that was majority about farming and agriculture. All right, so we look into uh, Leviticus chapter 7 in the Amplified Version, from verse 11, it says, Now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offering, which shall be presented to the Lord. If, if one offers it as a sacrificial meal, notice that word. If one offers it as a sacrificial meal or for Thanksgiving, you see that? It says if one offers it as a sacrificial meal of Thanksgiving, then along with the sacrifice of Thanksgiving, he shall offer it. So Thanksgiving is an offering. 
It's beyond words. In our vocabulary, when we say we're giving thanks, we just say words. Well, I give you thanks. But in scripture, thanksgiving comes with offering. The offering of thanksgiving. The offering of thanksgiving. It's not just offering by verbal words, but rather it is the offering by something tangible. And that's why it's called sacrificial thanksgiving. It means it's a sacrifice. When something is a sacrifice, it means that it might not be convenient. That's right. But it also comes to me something of great value. Yes. When the Bible calls Jesus the sacrificial lamb of God, it means that it's not convenient, but it costing God. Yes. Are, are you all with me? It cost God to sacrifice his son. Can you think about the God who made the whole universe? The God of this world? Literally, who is a spirit being? Literally becoming a man to come into this world? Living his throne in heaven? Becoming the man Jesus? That's sacrifice, you I don't know if I was a God that I want to be like you I, I, do you know any God that wants to come in human form? I don't think so. So it took God a sacrifice to sacrifice his position and take the form of a man. Humble himself. Take the form of a man and come in the man Jesus so as to feel what you feel. So as to not understand what you're going through. And then he came to only understand and feel it, but to take away those sins and the repercussion that could come to the human race. That's a great sacrifice. It cost him something. When people say salvation is free, salvation is free, I don't think so. Salvation is not free. It cost God something. He had to let go. Do you know what Jesus said on the cross? The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. When you hear the word bruised for our iniquity, it was an unleashing of demonic uh, being, evil. The hell rose up against him. And because of us, hell attacked his body. Every demon in hell and the devil came out that day and they attacked his body. Bruised for our own iniquity. They had a right to do that. Why? Because he placed his sin of the world upon himself. Gave them access to bruise him. So he said, why have thou forsaken me? That was great pain and anguish. It caused God something to come in form of a man. And the thing that he created now came and attacked him. Do you understand what it is to do sacrificial giving? God sacrificial gave because it showed us a model that this is how you sacrificially give. You don't, listen, you haven't given until that giving has become sacrificial. When you give and you go, mm, ouch, it hurts. <laughs> Are you with me? Because Jesus says it hurts. He said, it hurts. He says, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the anguish. Wow.